All right, folks, so today I want to talk about another foundational computer science paper. This one is by David Parnas. It was written back in 1972, and it talks about how you should decompose a system into modules. Now, we all know modularity is a great goal when we're designing a system. What exactly do we mean by modularity and what are its advantages? A system is modular if each task within it forms a separate and distinct module. And its inputs and outputs are clearly well-defined, and its interfaces with other modules is very well-defined. And what are the advantages of this? Each module can be tested independently. It can be developed independently. It's also great for maintenance because you can isolate faults down to a specific module. So that's great. But given a problem definition, given a system that we want to develop, how should we break it down into modules? That is the question that this paper tries to address. Now, modularity lets us shorten development time because if we break down our modules cleanly, each of them can be developed independently. It gives us a lot of flexibility because Again, if we cleanly design our modules, it should be possible to make big changes to one module without affecting all the others. And last but not least, modules are just more comprehensible. They make the system easier to understand. In terms of terminology, Parnas uses the term modularization, which is a specific breakdown into modules. And he thinks about modules more as assigning responsibilities rather than sub-programs. So modularizations include all the design decisions which you make before you start developing the modules. To describe the criteria which we should use to break a system down into modules, we use a concrete example. And it's a pretty simple example. We want to build an indexing system which takes a list of lines which is composed of a set of words and each word is composed of a set of characters and we want to circularly shift the words in each line and then list all circular shifts of all lines in alphabetical order. Now this is intentionally a toy program just to demonstrate the various criteria using which we can break a system down into modules. Remember this paper was written back in 72. We didn't have high level languages and nice scripting languages with great abstractions. The author thinks that such a system could be developed by a good programmer within a week or two. Today, of course, you could probably knock out a 20 line Python program to do this. Okay, so given this problem definition, the author tries to break it down into modules using two different methods and then contrasts the two. Here's the first modularization. The first step is just reading the input. So this input module would read the data lines and store them in memory. The second module is circular shift. This module makes an index which prepares the addresses of the first character of each circular shift, and it leaves its output in memory. Then we have another module that does alphabetizing, another one that does output using the arrays produced by the previous modules, and finally we have an orchestration module which calls all the other modules in sequence. It's important to note that this breakdown is a perfectly reasonable one given the definition of modularity. The system is divided into a number of modules with well-defined interfaces and each one is small and simple. Now let us contrast this with another modularization. Let's call this modularization 2. As I go through this description you'll notice a number of things that are very different. The first module is one that deals with line storage and its interface is a number of functions and subroutines which let you read write 
and manipulate characters and words. So for example, you have a function called char, which will give you the seeth character in the rth line of the wth word. You can do set char, which sets a particular character in a word and a line. Now you have another module which reads the original lines from, from whatever the input media is and stores them in memory. The circular shifter again is defined in terms of functions. So for example, you have this function which gives you the characters in a circularly shifted version of a line. And then you have another module which handles alphabetization and it exports two functions alf which does some setup and ith which serves as an index ith of i will give the index of the circular shift which comes ith in the alphabetical ordering you have an output module and then again you have an orchestration module so both of these modularizations are perfectly reasonable they satisfy all the criteria for what makes a modular design what are the differences between these two and which one might be better. To compare the two modularizations, we have to look at what design decisions are likely to change. We could change the input format. We could not even have all the lines stored in memory. If they're too large, they might be stored out on disk. We might not have four characters to a word. We might not even make an index, but compute the alphabetization at runtime. And now if you look at these things that might change, the two modularizations start to look a little bit different. For example, if you look at the second change, and that was the assumption that all lines are stored in memory. The first modularization would need changes in every module if that assumption changed. If you look at the assumption that each word is made up of four characters. Now let's compare the interfaces between the modules. In the first modularization, the interface between the modules is the physical format in which the data is laid out in memory. And in the second modularization, the interface between modules is much more abstract. It is made up of subroutines and function calls which read and write various words or characters or lines. And what this means is that in the first modularization, the assumptions of physical layout permeate all the modules. This means that the system will only be comprehensible as a whole. And now you will begin to see the differences in the criteria used for each modularization. This brings us to really the central idea of this paper. The first modularization was basically a flowchart. It looked at the sequence of steps that needed to happen and made each step a module. The second modularization was made using information hiding as a principle. The modules did not correspond to sequential steps in the problem definition, but in terms of a design decision which it hides from all other modules. The interface was chosen to reveal as little as possible about the inner workings of the module. Now here the author quickly makes a distinction between a good decomposition and a layered or hierarchical structure of the design. It's very common to see layered designs where each layer depends on the one below it, but it's entirely possible to have a good modularization without this kind of partial ordering where a layer only depends on the one below it. So according to Parnas, these two considerations are independent. So to conclude, the author wanted to show that decomposing on the basis of a flowchart is almost always the wrong design choice. Instead, we want to begin with a list of difficult design decisions 
and each module should then be designed to hide these design decisions from all the other modules. Thanks for reading this paper with me. I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you next time.